Okay, what I'm going to do in this video is to attempt to do some scripting to enable um, the Myth TV front end to start up automatically, as well as the Myth TV back end. So currently, I've had to type a command in to get the Myth TV back end running, and same as um, same with the front end, I've had to manually start the GUI and manually start the front end. Ideally, if you wanted this to be like a proper appliance or set-top box, if you like, you'd want it to all automatically work um, every time you turn it on. And in theory, with the back end, you, you're probably very likely not to um, ever turn it off that often or reboot it that often. Um, so that's one thing you definitely do want running at all times is as soon as the machine comes up, you definitely want the, the back end up and running uh, just so that recordings don't get missed. So I'm going to start with that with uh, getting the Myth backend daemon automated. And basically all I do is just crib off one of the uh, existing um, daemons, just crib some of the um, shell scripts that are used to start that up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to log in as myself. Oops, I'm going to spell my own name properly. Start. In fact, I'll become the root. Switch to Myth TV. And start the front end from there. So let's move these around a bit. And I'll just resize this so it's not off the end of the screen. So I'm going to become root in this one so I don't accidentally exit. on that screen. Um, so, as I say, what I'm going to do is to emulate um, the startup scripts. If we go to init D, there's the scripts that are used to manually start and stop, but they're also called by the automated scripts that start and stop at um, power on and shut down. Um, one that I'm going to use uh, as an example, as a template, if you like, if you like, is the fcrom one because it's uh, fairly similar to what Myth backend needs. So I'm going to rename this to or copy it and call it Myth backend. And now I'm going to edit it. And you can see there's um, all the code relating to FCRON. So first thing I'm going to do to make this easier to read is to reverse the video. It just makes it a lot easier to read. I'm sure there's a setting to configure on the um, X in it. Um, but I don't have those, that information offhand. So what all I'm going to do is just go through this script and I'm not going to delete this stuff. I may as well keep it here, make it look like the rest, but I'm going to change the relevant details. So begin Miss Backend. Miss Backend init script author oh, let's put the name in there I'll just put my name in there for example so I know I've created this so provides myth backend required start um Quite start. Oh, 
guess we'd have to make sure that the MySQL MariaDB database is up and running. Um, so I guess I could put that in there. Should start. I'm not exactly sure what these do. Um, but they're just comments, so I'm going to just delete these. I think I'll just leave. I think I'll leave them as they are. Yeah, I'll just put a question mark next to them, as I don't understand particularly what they're referring to. But as it's a comment. Um, I'll leave the default start and stop. This should be the same. This starts this back end. This back end daemon. XLFS info provided by. I'm not sure what that is. I'll just leave that in. So it looks like this calls some functions. Let's have a quick nosy at those to see if they're relevant to this case. So it looks like they're just general functions. So that's just provides some functions, I presume, for the start and stop scripts. So the bin file, we need to tell it where the binary file is for Myth TV. So that's in forward slash opt forward slash Myth TV forward slash bin forward slash Myth backend. So if it starts it's going to log an info message starting from and it runs a function that looks like called bin file. So we need to modify this to execute the code required to start the backend, which is the daemon file name followed by, by minus d, which I presume demonizes the um, program log path forward slash far forward slash myth tv forward slash log and run as user myth tv and evaluate the return value Stopping F cron kill proc bin file. So I assume that will find the um, process ID for the binary that's run and kill it. Restart just stops and starts. Status shows the status. So I think that should be enough. So uh, let's try that. Um, this back end. Right, so. Yep, let's try that. So I have to run this as a user, uh, root user because it would be run by as the root user normally. So I'm going to run myth backend status. It's not running, it says, so that's correct. So if I now type start, okay, I need to change that. Now if I run status, yes, it's telling me it's running with process ID 3949. 
So if I was to do PS minus A grep three nine four nine should be able to confirm that. Yes, yeah, there's miss back end there, so that's fine. And now I'm going to stop the process and recheck the status is not running, so that's good. So all I need to do is just to change that message. Uh, it looks like there's two messages there. So insert this back end. This back end. Um, now I seem to remember actually there's on the status we can actually run um, the binary and given a certain switch it can actually list some status information so if I run it here again with help we can get things like the uh, where is it yeah um, information such as programs that are about to expire and a list of scheduled recordings so we can put those two in and when we do a status not only will we get the information telling us that the daemon is running we'll get status about the daemon as well so we get a little bit more information so let's save that so status at the moment it's actually reporting uh, pretty explorer cars that one none of the fun will be defined oh okay prevents use so I can't mix the two on the same line okay so what I'll have to do is to um, put this one on the next line Bin file, save that, let's run the status again, that's better. So let's go back and we can see that it's printing up all the information about the database, Qt version, what system it was built on and okay, there's a warning there about um, the code set is actually expecting to be run in the UTF-8 code set so that might be something, it's not a big deal um, but it might be something to set the code set for the Myth TV user to be UTF-8 that should get rid of that um, some more information there and there it's actually got the um, listings that are going to be expired so that's stuff that I looked at last time um, because the server hasn't been running, it hasn't had the chance to tidy him up. But as it says there, it's going to be um, deleting them anyway. Um, and the order they're going to be deleted it doesn't say when they're going to delete, unless this is the expiry counter, possibly. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it shows the locale, some more information. Um, so that was the part about the expiry because that's the first one we run then it's reissuing all the same status information and when it's tried to connect to the database to find out about what's scheduled it can't connect because the server's down so that's good so what I'm going to do is to start the server now and just wait for it to get going. 
let's try that, do another status. Okay, well it's worked this time, it's probably not gathered anything yet, either there's nothing set or it's still um, either fetching the listings. Um, once it's fetched them and they're populated, that, that'll be it. Um, it'll be, they'll be populated forever for that, I think it's normally a week ahead. So it should have gathered everything previously when I run this in the last video. So it could be that I didn't schedule any re repeat recordings and that's why there's nothing there at the moment. So what I'll do with that is schedule a repeat recording and then show a status. We'll show those upcoming recordings, but you can see it's not failing at all. It's, it says print list start. It's got a header and then immediately print list end. So that shows there's nothing scheduled at all. I'll just run stop again to make sure it shuts down. Stopping the back end, status again. And you can see it's not, it can't connect to the database. So that's the myth, myth back end script complete. Second thing I've got to do now is to create run levels for the myth back end. Um, script to run automatically a power on and shut down. So I'm going to go into etc rc.d and then rc. You'll see there's all the uh, directories for all the different run levels as well as the init d we've just been in. So I'm going to go into rc0 which is run level 0 first of all. And you can see there's various scripts there, and that's all they are, it's just sim links to the main um, uh, scripts, the uh, startup and shutdown scripts. Um, so all we need to do is create a new sim link to get this to work. So what I'm going to do is link this with a sim link, as we've got there, init.d forward slash myth back end and I'm going to set this to run um, right at the very beginning so the lowest numbers are the numbers that are going to uh, shut down last when run level I think run level 0 is a shutdown as far as I remember I can't remember them now um, but certainly in, in this situation, you can see that the more important services such as this KLogD in the network have got the higher numbers. So as this is going to be one of the last things to run, or if not the last thing to run, I'm going to set it, set it quite low at K01. Uh, uh, yes, this is the sh uh, shutdown because the K is the uh, kill, I believe, it's off the top of my head. So K01, myth back end I'll call the script and press enter so now if I do another listing you'll see that the script in this directory when run level sorry not run level 0 run level 1 I should have been in run level 0 um, run level 1 is run then the script at myth back end is executed So I'm actually going to copy the sim link, which is what the minus capital P does, the KO1, and I'm going to copy it into RC01 because that's uh, sorry RC0 because that's where I should have started really logically. So I will go there just to make sense, but I'll show you it anyway. You can see that's created that there as well. And I'm also going to copy that same script, or the, sorry, the sim link with the same name into RC6 as well. Um, for the in fact, I think that's the shutdown level. Then I'm going to copy this kill script but I'm going to rename it as a start script and this time as a start script I want it to start right at the very end 
after all the other services have been started because it's the it's the basically the last demon I want running um, after everything else. So this is going into RC2 and I'm going to call it S99. So again, it's the last one. So all the earlier, the lower S numbers will be started prior to Myth Backend. And I want to copy that also to run level 3, 4, and 5. And if I look at those levels that I've just done, so let's check RC6 has got the kill at level 1, so it'll get killed first on shutdown. Then look at 2. You can see the script gets started last of all at S99. Same with 3. Uh, oh no, I've done that wrong, haven't I? Yep, I've done that wrong. That should be... So RMRC3, I copied the script from RC3 K01, and I'm going to remove 4 and 5 as well, 4 and 5. What I want to do is CP minus P dot dot RC2 S99 myth backend. And I'll copy that to RC3. RC four and five. So let me go back here. Let's just check all of the directories. So in the init, I've got the main script which has been symlinked in all the run levels. So in RC0, I've got <coughs> um, the kill at level 1, which is correct. In RC1, I've got the kill at level 1. In 2, 3, 4 and 5, I've got the start at 99. And level 6... I've got um, the kill at level 1 and in the single level RCS um, which is more to do with the networking um, there's probably no change actually although uh, as a single we probably want it started I would have thought Um, yeah, I'm not sure really because, uh, so let's see what they've got. They've got local net starting, you have started, so it looks like the startup script's going there. So I think I should maybe copy the S99 into the single R RCS, the single run level. In fact, I thought that was similar to RC3, but obviously not. Um, so let's copy RC... RC start 99 into RCS. already in RCD now. Okay. So there it is. It should start after everything else. Okay, so really that means now if I change run levels um, should have a script that works um, depending on 
what we're doing with the machine powering up powering down so what I'm going to do now is to reboot the machine and check that the back end does in fact shut down and come up so I'll come out of this screen come out of this log out and reboot and hopefully as the screen whizzes by we should see that the yes you can see this back end has stopped there so that's good it's the first service to stop it's what I wanted so now wait for the machine to reboot and hopefully the last service to start will be missed back end <coughs> okay yeah there it is it's starting this back end in fact, it looks like it started it twice. That may be that RCS that's um, started it twice. Um, I must admit, I didn't actually add it there when I was testing, so I might actually remove it. Um, RCD. So I'll remove it from there. right and I'll reboot the machine again and the screen will sync up eventually right that looks better it's not started too early now and it is starting right at the very end so that should be the last service that starts and it has so that's all good so I'm going to log in again we've now got the back end running automatically if I look at the um, service itself, the daemon, uh, looks like I'm not going to be able to run this, no, so sudo and status, we should see that it is running and yes again we've got this print list start and print list end so that's good, it's going to become the root So that I can become Myth TV, StarTex. I'm going to put this window on the route again to help prevent me accidentally logging out. And what I'll do in this window is just quickly start the front end and And, and schedule a program so if I go to manage recordings schedule recordings look at the program guide and find something uh, let's see if there's anything that's on several times uh, the, uh, there's two recordings there so if I do M recording options um, edit schedule and if I press the left arrow here there's the defaults to record all up, all showings press the up arrow to save press enter you can see immediately both those programs have been set to A to show that it's a record all uh, program and both programs have highlighted shown that they will be recorded so now if I quit this and if I 
uh, go on to the root and do a status. We'll now see those programs in the list of programs to record, and there they are. So there's the, there was two there, and then we saw it looks like it's found another two to record within the, the uh, coming week within schedules. And this, if, as you saw, there were some channels that didn't have any schedules, they'll get populated, um, and there, there could be more recordings that appear that match the program that we set. Um, so you can see it shows you the title. The subtitle is this part here, the channel number, the station name, and the day start, 23, 11 to 11.30. Um, I can't remember what these uh, columns are, but the last one's the priority. So it's got a default priority of zero. If you set a program with say, a higher priority, say one or two, for example, and there's a clash, then the one obviously with a higher priority will be the one that records So that is the back end up and running as we expect. So the third thing we've got to do now is to automate the starting of the front end. So what we've got to do first of all is to let me change the background again. Reverse video. Change that one as well. Is to edit the init table, which is the table that lists all the um, actions to take depending on different run levels that are active um, and it also lists the number of um, or defines the number of virtual terminals that are started as well so you can see by default there's six virtual terminals and um, what I'm going to do is to add another virtual terminal virtual terminal 8 which is where the graphical front end will run um, and I've chosen 8 because 7 might be used by a user. For example, if you want to run this uh, TV setup, um, you don't want it to crash at all. So I'm going to select 8 and just copy this as run levels 2, 3, 4, 5 that this can run on. And respawn to automatically start up if it's stopped. Um, and just again copy the uh, terminal program and we don't specify a terminal name we want this to auto log in as myth TV and now we specify the terminal name TTY8 so let me just check that is okay. Yep. Now I'm going to save that. Then, as the Myth TV user, I'm going to let's just look see what's there already. Yep, I'm going to modify the Bash profile. Or oh, in fact, it's not there at the moment. I'm going to create the Bash profile. Dot Bash underscore profile. Oh, sorry, it is there already, yeah. Oh, it's copied this scale from the scale directory when it's created the user. So we don't need any of this, really. Um, well, I suppose we can ignore it, just add it in down here. What I'm going to do is to put some code in so that it can detect when it's being run on TTY8 and if it is being run on TTY8 to automatically start the GUI. So to do that we type in this code so dollar and bracket TTY so it runs that program star TTY8 so it says, am I running um, a terminal that ends in TTY8? If so, start X 
and log out when that is finished. Terminate and ESAC to end the case statement. So really what I've got to do now is to try and emulate that. Um, I might have to reboot the machine actually to get this to work. But let's shut this down. Come out of that, see if I can go to terminate. No, I can't. I'll have to reboot so that the init scripts run. And hopefully we should find that the front end starts automatically. Okay, so there's the back end starting. There's the login prompt. We notice the cursor's gone now, so it's and the disk is rattling around. So, yep, there's the GUI started. <clears throat> so the final thing we've got to do is to get the front end to actually start automatically, and that's relatively straightforward. It's just a case of modifying a hidden file or creating a hidden file called xinit rc and oops, going to insert mode and doing exec and the binary that we want to start off which is um, opt myth tv bin myth front end and save so now if I try to quit because I've set this to auto login in the init tab um, it won't quit back to the prompt anymore it will see if I press control D it will restart the GUI and hopefully it should restart uh, start the myth front end and there it is and once again if I press escape there and say yes I want to quit it shuts down the X system, but it automatically restarts it. So we're always in the graphical environment. If you do want to reboot, then you'll have to go to the virtual terminal one, control alt F1, and then you can do control alt delete or log in and do something from there. So what I'm going to do now is the final test is to reboot the machine. You should see the back end coming up. You should see the GUI starting with the myth. TV front end all automatically starting. So control alt delete. Okay, once again, the back end starting. There's the login prompt. The cursor disappears, showing that something else is happening. The disk is going round. And because it started up so quickly now, the back end hadn't started quick enough. And that's why we saw that little screen there saying, waiting for the myth back end. And obviously once the back end is up, the front end appears. Um, so that's it really. I suppose it's worth mentioning actually if the back end does go down you will get a message coming up. So if I log in as root um, etc init dot d with back end stop if I switch back to virtual terminal 8 um, we will actually see a message coming up saying can't connect and there it is can't connect to the master backend so if ever the master backend stops for some reason it crashes which 
Um, I've never known it to, unless it's been caused by something I've done. Um, you'll know straight away that, that that has happened. So again, if I start that and switch back, that message will disappear um, as soon as the front end detects that the master back end has settled down. And there you go, you get a nice big tick.